What is up everybody? Welcome back to another Star Wars Battlefront 2 video. Now surprisingly, we actually have a bit of new information coming out. It has been just days since the new update has been released and we already have new information coming from Ben and from the hero designer. So in this video, I'm going to go over this new information and give you guys my opinion. So to start us off, basically people have not been happy with BB-8 and BB-9E. There is a section of the community that just is completely against the idea of these being heroes. They don't like them in any way, shape, or form, and they have been pretty vocal about this. So basically, somebody was trash talking at Ben, and then Ben said, we listen to the community quite a bit, however, it's our right as developers of the game to ignore said feedback when it boils down to, I don't like this, take it away. BB-8 and BB-9E are staying. So that is referring to so many people asking to take them out of the game. I didn't realize that there was this much of a backlash for these heroes. I think they're fun. I enjoy playing as them. And I don't really see what the big problem is. I don't know why this is so controversial. And then the hero designer also chimed in and mentioned something about this as well. He said BB-8 and BB-9E are definitely staying. I cannot rank them, but they are together with Grievous and Greedo. The heroes I am the most proud of in the Battlefront franchise. I will never stop smiling when I see BB's rolling in our game. So he is really proud of the fact that he made BB-8 and BB-9E. He had a lot of fun with designing them. He has been around since since Battlefront 2015, so he worked on Dengar and Greedo and Bosk, and I mean, he's been involved in creating all of the heroes that we see in Battlefront. So he is really proud of the new droids, and he is confirming that they are here to stay. I don't know why people would think that they would even consider removing them after they put all this time and effort into creating them, but I just thought it was interesting to see that they are addressing that backlash, and they are saying, no, we are not removing them. Pretty much shut up and enjoy the content. <laughs> so I think they're fun, and I'm glad that they're they're here to stay and then if you don't like them just get over it and then in regards to bb8 and bb9e people have been asking the hero designer just different questions about them for example we have this question it says bb8 feels perfect bb9e is doing a perfect role as support for his team maybe better indications on who you're healing slash better feedback plus when your abilities recharge faster maybe a slight buff for bb9e would be great but that might be because I don't play him enough. And then the hero designer responded and he says, yes, the back to support slash swift support is badly communicated. I'll look into it. He should also receive more points for supporting. So this is some of my major concerns with BB9E is that he's so support based, but you have no idea if you're actually healing your teammates or not. I don't know the radius that the back to support has. I don't know how much health I'm giving my teammates. So a lot of BB9E's abilities are based around helping your team, but when I play Play as BB9E, I have no idea how much I'm helping my team. So I think this would be a good change. I'm glad that he's looking into it, and they need some sort of indicator that you're actually giving your teammates back, though. Because I think if more people could see that you're healing your teammates, I think more people would have the incentive to actually stay closer to their teammates. And then moving forward, somebody was asking Ben some stuff. Ben was responding to some questions on Twitter. Somebody said, Hey, Ben, can you guys add a hero bot to the side that you are playing on instant action? would be really cool and balanced as well as helpful. And then Ben said, this is something we're investigating. We like the idea ourselves. So currently in instant action, you only have one hero on the team that you're playing on, and that is your hero. So for example, if you pick Chewbacca, then that's the only hero that your team gets. And then the opposing team would have someone like Grievous and Dooku, and then you're outnumbered two heroes versus one hero. So I think this would be a good change. I don't play instant action that much because I'm just more of an online person, but I'm all for any improvements they make to instant action. I mean, because if they make instant action better, I might have more incentive to play it. So I think that would be a pretty cool change. So moving forward, the hero designer was talking about his plans for some of the heroes here in the near future. And he tweeted out that Chewbacca's bowcaster will see a big rework. Not sure of the release date yet. Same for Aiden's Pulse Cannon and Boba's Concussion. Not sure when finished, but in progress. So Chewbacca is getting a big rework. Aiden's getting a rework. Boba's Concussion is getting a rework. So that's pretty interesting that they're looking into completely changing some of these abilities for some of these heroes after two and a half years. So out of all these, I'm pretty excited for Chewbacca's bowcaster change and Boba Fett. I don't really care about Aiden as much, but I hope Chewbacca gets some range to him because right now Chewbacca is really good in the hero modes like Heroes vs. Villains and Hero Showdown, but he really sucks in like Galactic Assault and Capital Supremacy. I've said it many times, I think Chewbacca needs an ability where if you charge in his bowcaster, it will shoot one single accurate bolt, kind of like when he shot Kylo in the side in Episode 7. So I think if they made it so Chewbacca had the 
the ability to like hit people at a distance, a lot more people would choose Chewbacca, and I hope that this is what he's going for with this change. Because that would improve Chewbacca by like a million percent, and I think there would be a lot more Chewbacca's running around on the battlefront. And then, I don't know what they're going to do with Boba's concussion rocket. I don't know if that has any tie-ins with them changing his jetpack to be like the jet trooper. Maybe they're getting rid of the concussion and replacing it with different jetpack controls. Maybe they're making it last longer. Maybe it'll have more of a blinding effect. Who really knows? But I've always felt that the concussion rocket has just always kind of sucked. So I'm all for any changes to Boba Fett. And then I would imagine they're just going to make Aiden's pulse cannon just more accurate and less clunky when you use it. And then a lot of people have been concerned about the recent Darth Vader change. Darth Vader is basically invincible with this latest update. Uh, Darth Vader currently has a 75% damage reduction with his force choke. So you can force choke, you have damage reduction, and you can block and attack opponents all at the same time while you're choking. And this has resulted in people just going on huge kill streaks with Darth Vader. He's been dominating in heroes versus villains. So he is addressing this. He says Vader's choke damage reduction will be lowered from 75% to 20. We'll see if need to be removed after that change. So he's not going to get a complete damage reduction removal. So they're just going to toy around with it. They'll see how the community feels about him having 20% damage reduction. I think that'll make a huge difference. I don't know if it needs to be completely removed. So I would expect that to come probably in the next update because that's kind of a small change that they'd have to make. So we will definitely be getting a nerf to Darth Vader here somewhat soon. And then as we are on the topic of hero changes, back in January he mentioned that he was going to change some stuff about Leia. He said the plan for Leia is buff one ability, modify one ability, completely change one ability. Not set yet, but that's the current goal. So today we found out a little bit more information about the things that he's going to do with Leia. So he tweeted out this morning, he said, Leia's changes are being tested, hope to release them soon. And he had a gift saying thermal detonators that I can work with. So based off of that tweet, I would imagine they're probably going to just completely get rid of her flashbang grenade because the flashbang has just always been kind of crappy. It's never been as good as the officers. The officers blinds and it does damage and Leia's just does a blinding effect and it's nowhere near as good as the Death Trooper Sonic Imploder. So Leia's flashbang has just always been really, really bad. So I'm guessing that they're going to just give her a detonator, especially since she was holding a detonator in Episode 6, and they even have that outfit that she wore in Episode 6 in this game. So I think a detonator would fit Leia's character pretty well, and I think that'll make Leia way, way better. And then to just further confirm the whole grenade thing, he tweeted out that he's uh, changing the grenade at least, and he's looking at the shield too. So yeah, definitely some grenade changes. And then I don't know what he's doing with the shield. I think the shield should be way better than what it is. Either make it so Leia has the ability to shoot from the inside of the bubble, kind of like she did in 2015, so she can shoot opponents that are outside of the bubble while she's safely inside the bubble, or they need to give a major buff to the bubble so that it can take more hits and nothing can pass through it. As of right now, there's a number of different things that can go through the bubble. For example, fire can go through the bubble, Palpatine's lightning can go through the bubble, and it just makes Leia a huge sitting duck if she's sitting in her bubble and she thinks that she's safe, and then a Palpatine comes around the corner and can completely kill her in seconds. So hopefully Leia's bubble gets some sort of major buff to make it better than the officers. And then the final thing that he tweeted, he said, after the changes I mentioned, I'll try out how it plays to have the charge rolling shoulder to be oriented with the camera instead of orientation of the body. So he's going to look at changing the camera angle for BB-8 with his shoulder charge ability, just so that it's a little easier to aim your shoulder charge. And then he says, after that, we'll be plowing down bugs, which is the thing that I'm the most excited for. Like all these changes are cool and stuff but my biggest thing is bugs i don't know who is in charge of the hit detection i don't know if it's this hero designer i don't know who it is but that is my number one problem with this game is the hit detection luke anakin vader anybody that has a saber can kill you when they're not even on your screen with their lightsaber so i i hope that that gets fixed at some point it's so infuriating to get killed by a saber even though it's not on your screen 
and it makes it almost impossible to dodge and escape as a blaster hero when sabers have such crazy range to them. So I'm looking forward to all these changes we're going to be getting. I'm excited to test them all out because something as small as a change like this gives new life to that hero. Something as tiny as changing Chewbacca or changing Leia brings new life to the game and it gives me something new to do. But that is going to do it for all the information I have for you guys in this video. Let me know what you guys think of all these changes down in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to follow me on all social media at Games. All the links are found in the description down below. Check out another video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will talk to you guys next time. Will you join me? Accept your fate. I grow impatient.